Hey everyone, thank you very much for hitting that play button. This is another episode of the Dave Bullis Podcast. Before I get to today's episode, I just want to mention very quickly, I need you all to please vote for me in the Potter Madness Podcast Competition. This is going up Wednesday, March 8th, 2017. The competition's only open for two more days, and it's not even close. We're getting wobbed right now, to be honest with you. So please, there's a link in the show notes, DaveBulls.com. There's a link in the show notes for this, episode 152, where I, I, it'll take you right to, you can vote for me. There's only two options. You either vote for me or you vote for the people that we're playing against called Six Six Studded Six Studded Pod, I think it's called, or Six Sided Dice Pod. I can't remember. Anyway, it's all there. So uh, if they're listening to this, I, I apologize for not knowing your podcast name, but it's all good. And again, I really do appreciate everyone if you could vote for me. It would just take literally five seconds. You don't have to sign up for anything. And I really, really would appreciate it. And on this episode of the Dave Bullis Podcast, I'm talking to a former adult actress who is going into the acting and modeling world. She's actually been doing it for a few years now. She starred in Black Dynamite, and she's also starring in Catch-22, which is actually released this year. It's actually released a couple months ago, and we just had Josh on on the last episode, and he actually was the director of the project. Really quickly, uh, I know... Uh, I we we briefly talk about the adult film world world. Yeah, sorry if I could actually talk. We do briefly talk about the adult film world from and honestly it's probably one percent of this conversation. So if you're you know, maybe tuning in to hear more about that, I'm sorry we're not really gonna talk too much about that. Literally it's like one percent and ninety percent is about just the crazy world we call the indie filmmaking world. This is episode one fifty two with guest Charmaine Star. You're listening to the Dave Bullis Podcast. Hi, Charmaine. Thanks a lot for coming on the show. Hi, Dave. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure to have you here. Uh, you know, I wanted to ask Charmaine, you know, how you got started in the film industry. It's a question I ask everybody because nobody has the same exact story. And I just wanted to ask, you know, how did you find yourself in the film industry? How I found myself in the film industry, um, it wasn't, it was not too long ago. Um, I, I was in the, I started in the adult industry for quite some time, about, 15 years. Um, I, uh, you know, I did various films, adult films, magazines. Uh, I, you know, so I built a name for myself. Um, and I think it was around 2006 or seven. Uh, my agent uh, had a, a booking for me. Uh, the director specifically wanted me uh, in the movie. So I didn't have to cast for this role and it was a very short role it was for black dynamite and I didn't think anything of it I thought it was just you know a usual mainstream because I've done a few mainstreams for uh, you know I've shot for HBO Cinemax uh, some commercials so I thought it was okay you know just a little mainstream role Um, and then when I you know when I shot the film everybody was really amazing Uh, the cast and crew the director you know, Michael Jai White, you know, everybody was really nice. And it was, you know, it was only a few days that I shot the film. Um, a, a year later, they gave me a call and they said that the film was going to be in Sundance Film Festival and that I was invited. So I thought that I was surprised that this film, um, you know, was went so big. And when I went to the film, film festival, Sundance Film Festival, um, it got picked up right away by Sony Pictures, and um, you know, I I went into this new world of the mainstream world of film, and um, I fell in love. I loved it. That's how I started in the film, the you know, mainstream film industry. 
So uh, just to to go back to when they first approached you about being in Black Dynamite. Uh, so yes. what were your your first impressions of, of actual of actually of the, the film industry of you know having to sort of uh, you know there's a lot of waiting around as they say um, there's a lot of downtime. So you know mm-hmm. did you find it a lot more sort of hectic, slower, faster? You know what were your first impressions of it? Well, my first impressions uh, were it was just, it's just like the same set. Um, that I've, you know, in the adult industry, it was, I mean, it's a big production. Um, I wasn't really nervous because it was just a set, but I was kind of nervous because there was a, just a little bit more people. There's just a lot more people involved. Um, and it wasn't, it, it wasn't, you know, the, the cast and crew and director I, I wasn't familiar with. So, you know, um, there was some downtime, but, you know, that's just, how it, how it is, you know, even in the adult industry, there's always a lot of downtime. you got to wait for your scene. So I'm used to that. So, you know, there wasn't anything new. Uh, the only thing was just getting used to uh, different people around me, you know, the director and, and, and the cast, because, you know, I, I come from a different world of film. So just meeting regular actors and, and you know, from that uh, side of the world, it's, it's very interesting because they were surprised about me because I was, you know, a little bit more confident uh, in, you know, the scene because in the scene I was, you know, I had to be naked. But, you know, but right when I started, this, you know, this, they shot the, the scene, I had a robe on. So when the director said, you know, he was ready, I, you know, I, I was confident. I didn't feel kind of insecure about not showing my body. But it's funny because the, the crew around me were actually more shy um, you know, they're like kind of looking away and making me feel comfortable. Like, are you okay here? Do you, here's a towel. I'm like, no, 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 it's okay. I'm all, you know, I'm fine. <laughs> so it was, it was very, it was nice. It was sweet. You know, they, you know, that's the only thing that was uh, different. You know, uh, Lloyd Kaufman from Troma Entertainment. I don't know if you know who Lloyd is. Uh, mm-hmm. no. uh, I taught, okay, so uh, he's a, he's been producing movies for like 30 years. And uh, one of the things that, he 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 found was that you know cert, like actresses whenever they they have to do like a nude scene like that or maybe you know be in front of the camera like that they all they just the day of the shoot they get very tense they they start have, you know they start you know saying oh i i don't know if i want to do this and mm-hmm. um that's when he basically uh he approached like Jenna Jameson at the time and said you know would you want to do a scene where we can just have you nude in front of the camera and she mm-hmm. said you know i'm i'm so used to it it's you know it's like another day at the office, so to speak. Uh, that's when mm-hmm. he started getting like you know more adult performers in some of his movies to do scenes like that because they're they they are so comfortable with it. Yes, yeah, I totally agree with that. Yeah, I I think it's because of that, um, you know, being comfortable in, in front of the camera, uh, being professional, knowing the lighting, uh, knowing your surroundings. Um, you know, it's much easier to work with somebody you know, in that if, if, if there's a particular scene that has, that someone has to be naked or, you know, uh, it's, it's not as, it's not as hard to deal with. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so when you finally saw Black Dynamite, you know, you were, you were shown a screening of it. Did you ask, what did you think of the movie initially? Cause I mean, it is a playoff of like the grindhouse seventies movies and I, and, and, you know, being a film nerd with no life, I really, I, you know, got the movie right off the bat. I thought it was hilarious, but I'm interested in, you know, to know your thoughts. You know, what was your first impressions of the movie? Well, the first time I saw the film, I saw it at Sundance Film Festival. I never went to the screen I and mean, it was, it was the premiere there and, um, to see myself in the big screen, uh, was amazing. I, I was, I was, I, I don't know. I, I had a eerie feeling. It was, it was amazing. And when I saw the whole film, cause I, you know, I knew it was a Kung Fu, uh, seventies, you know, black exploitation film. I just, you know, I, I, I didn't see the whole film cause I only had those two days or few days of shooting. And I absolutely loved it. I thought it was hilarious. Cause I'm, you know, I'm, I'm from California. I grew up in the 80s, 90s. So like the whole, you know, the style and the attitude and the slang, I got it all. I understood it. I I, I was laughing the whole time. It was it was amazing. 
And yeah. plus, I love the whole kung fu thing too. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was it was great as well. Uh, especially, you know, again, it was a throwback to those that '70s grindhouse feel to it. And I'm glad that yeah. they took a, a you know a quote unquote risk with that movie because you know nowadays everything either has to be a reboot or it has to be an existing uh, intellectual property. And yes. it, it, it's yeah. it you know whenever you see a, like a new fresh movie like this come out. It's too often that movies like this could just get buried because you know the you know things happen yeah. by by a panel and they go oh you know black dynamite or or whatever no one's going to want to watch that but I'm glad that it actually got the the promotion that it deserved because it was a fantastic film. Oh yes, it was. You know, I it's it's original. You know, it's not ta- you know there there was there weren't any parts where it was taken from a, another film or this and that. It was just it was it was a collaboration, but it was done very well i mean it took you know it just got all these little parts of of history that that everybody any american you know like understands yeah exactly um yeah it was, it was very interesting um you know like i saw the film a few times um in america because there there were a few uh festivals and the premiere was at the arc light in hollywood um i also attended the American Deauville Festival in France. Um, and when they played the film um, in front of the French people, uh, it was surprisingly uh, not funny for them. <laughs> uh, you, uh, you, can, you can hear, like, just the, there were only two people laughing in the whole uh, theater, and it was just me and the director. It wasn't anyone else. Like, it was so... It was weird, because <laughs> they didn't understand the, you know, the the American, you know, humor mm-hmm. per se. So, um, you didn't hear, you, they were just kind of watching it. Like, uh, what is this? <laughs> so it was, it was weird, but it was, it was very interesting to see, you know, that movie in a different country and their reaction. It was very, um, it was funny. Yeah. And that, that brings up a good point just about, you know, the sort of cultural differences, uh, you know, between American humor and maybe French humor. Um, you know, yes. I, I think it was, um, I think it was John Carpenter who said that uh, in in France he's a horror filmmaker in uh, in England he's a uh, alt- I'm sorry in France he's an auteur in England he's a horror filmmaker and in America he's a bum and basically what he meant by that was they all have different interpretations of uh, of everything and uh, you know John yeah. Carpenter is a, is a is a genius as well and uh, but it's just but it's just always interesting to see those types of things and as we speak about that Charmaine one of the mm-hmm. things that I heard about was that movie studios now are thinking about releasing different cuts of the different of, of the film. So like you might see somewhere else more often than they, than they already do. Basically that means so that way it'll placate maybe audiences in China and it'll placate audiences in France and placate audiences in Germany that way, mm-hmm. instead of just trying to release the same thing. I mean, they already do that anyway, but now I'm saying like more and more so, and it's gonna, probably going to come to the indie level as well uh, because you know, just so again, because now Netflix is everyone has Netflix nowadays. So, mm-hmm. uh, yes. so I, but I, but yeah. but to avoid something like that where there was almost like no, you know, no laughter in the whole theater. Oh yeah, it was funny. It, it, it was it was like they yeah they had no clue what you know why it was funny, um, and you know like, like the scene where you know like they were at the restaurant and how they discovered chicken and waffles you know, you know I don't know if you remember that scene where when they said chicken and waffles and we know chicken and waffles you know it was it's it's a very american you know thing and in france they were just like uh okay <laughs> <laughs> and they're just like oh god I'm, and i had to like hide myself from laughing cuz i know the movie is funny and the people around me were just like what's so funny <laughs> so it was yeah but it was interesting. It was it was fun. <laughs> yeah, and I'm glad you had a good experience, you know, with it. Uh, because, you know, sometimes, you know, on, on first movie sets like that, some again, like I was saying about downtimes and things like that, some people can some people can sort of come away and be like, yeah, I did that once and never again. And I'll give you an example of that. I, I was on a film set yeah. one time. And mm-hmm. we had to be in a bar, and, and this bar scene. This is years ago when I uh, I was doing background work, and I actually was in this bar in, in the middle of August, and here in Philadelphia, and it mm-hmm. was so hot, and they had to turn off the air conditioner in the bar. Oh, that's terrible! I, yeah. When I walked out, I literally looked like I jumped in a pool, and I got back out. I was like my shirt. It was a blue shirt I was wearing. You could like it was just all this. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> 
And a couple of people were like, hey, this is, you know, our first thing. And they're like, we're, is this what this is like? Because we're never going to do it again. And uh, I was like, no, this is just a, a bad situation, you know. So as, as you yeah. sort of, you know, as you completed Black Dynamite, you know, did, mm-hmm. you know what did you want to go back into into into, into the film world or, or maybe even TV? Did you did you say to maybe your agent or manager at the time if you had one, hey, I want to get more parts like this? Yeah, you know, um, I, I did. I, after after I had that experience, um, you know, I I've kind of I. I I think during that time, I think it was 2008, nine, I was, uh, at the level of, of my adult career where I didn't have to shoot as much, uh, you know, I've already built a name for myself. So, um, I, I had different goals of, you know, changing my career, you know, crossing over, you know, t- talking to my, my managers and agents and telling them, okay, if you, if there are any, you know, mainstream, you know, television, films you know bring them my way um i you know i didn't want to do scenes anymore they're you know like boy girl scenes but i was only particular to doing just girl girl scenes um so i slowly changed my career and i I also feature dance so i you know i traveled a lot you know once or twice a month feature dancing all over you know all over the country so that took up a lot of my time that way i didn't have to shoot um, adult film and i can focus on you know, crossing over. So, um, I, I, I did, you know, I, I shot a lot of, uh, you know, for Cinemax, you know, the, the, I was a series regular on, you know, you know on, uh, you know, those sex, uh, what is it? I forgot those. It's been a while here. <laughs> um, you know, the, the, the soft core, you know, oh, okay. uh, the, sh- the skin and max stuff. So that even though it wasn't, I mean, it was mainstream, but you know, I, 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 I was, you know, I was interested in doing more um, of film. I, I liked the whole world of film, especially indie film. So um, I found another agent that uh, was specializing in in just film, and I did a lot of, you know, I tried, I did casting, I casted for some parts, uh, but it never worked out. I don't know, I, I, I was never picked or anything. So the next film that I did, um, it was. The Face of Evil, and it was actually uh, a friend of mine. He was, you know, he was involved in 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 the mainstream industry, and he asked me if I was interested, or just can you read for this film that I'm, you know, my friend is doing. He's directing, and I said, okay, I'll give it a try. And uh, the director asked me, um, would you like? To, there was two parts. Uh, one was the the main role or this other role, and he told me that the other role. Uh, fit me best because of my personality because he got, he says I can bring it out more so I, I just I also took that as an opportunity like it was it was very I don't know like the two films that I've done they've came to me which I'm grateful for so I never really had the opportunity to really you know like other actors you know where they have to cast and then they get picked but you have to do more casting you know how like they have like a reoccur you know they have to cast again Mm -hmm. or read again i never had that opportunity so uh, when we talk about casting Sherman, i wanted to actually ask did you ever found yourself maybe you know typecast or maybe uh were given similar roles and meaning like you know uh i've had friends of mine who uh, are from the Middle East? Uh, they're they're Middle Eastern background, and they said, Dave, the only things that we ever get are two things. Number one is uh, like an Indian shop clerk, or number two is playing like a suspicious terrorist type. Uh, and I mm-hmm. and they, they always they always talk to me about that. And I and I I just wanted to ask, you know, do you ever find yourself typecast in in, in roles maybe uh, uh, at all, or do you do you uh, do you not experience that? I I think I've gotten typecast. Um before a few times you know asian girl either asian or and and i'm a you know i'm comfortable doing nudity um i'm also uh and yeah just a sex you know like if i could if i'm able to show my boobs or you know be naked uh so but not really well yeah that's it and then like when you know the new that other film catch 22 it was an asian girl but um you know i was approached with that um that character so i never really had to ca- i mean i never had to cast for that either <laughs> which was hey that was nice you know but yeah i i, I never really experienced it i had, you know so okay no i i mean i, I always just w- wanted to ask that um 
because okay. you know again because I was well because the reason I brought that up was because I had a friend of mine who was bringing that up uh, again about that whole thing about being being sort of typecasted um, and I just saw I, I always you know I always ask that to actors too because sometimes even when a person plays a bad guy you know they never get out of playing a bad guy they're always right. a bad guy well yeah you know I mean right now you know I I you know I'm comfortable showing my body uh, you know and I, I'm Asian so that's pretty much my category <laughs> right now. And the two films that I know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm naked and, you know, I'm Asian. <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is, you know. It's it's a part sometimes. I mean, you can't, I can't change into a Latina or a black girl, so. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah well, it, my, my prediction is this. In the next, I think, five to, actually probably sooner than that, probably the next three to five years, I think the, the roles for Asians are going to skyrocket um, because the, the market over there, um, Japan's always, you know, all, Japan's Japan, but China, they have mm-hmm. the largest film industry in the world. Uh, sorry, they have oh, the, really? Uh, yeah, they actually, I'm sorry, n- n- uh, actually Bollywood is still number one, but, but China's coming, it was okay. fast becoming uh, number one. Um, oh. and, and then uh, you have obviously Vietnam's on the rise. South Korea is is also uh, they have a wonderful film market. Some of the best filmmakers in the world actually come from South Korea. Uh, and I mean, it's just been I, that's why I think you're going to start seeing. And then again, I, I mentioned Bollywood, which is in India. I mean, right. I, I, I'm predicting there's going to be a lot more different types of roles also because if Hollywood wants to keep exporting movies to those big markets, they're going to mm-hmm. have to appeal to those markets. So that's why I think those Asian Asian roles are just going to not be so stereotyped anymore and they're going to be more wide open. Yeah, I, 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 I'm seeing that. I'm seeing, uh, you know, because, it, it, I mean, the world is getting bigger and, and, you know, the attention is, you know, there's a lot, there's a bigger, it's a bigger world out there. I, actually, there's a, a former adult film star, her name is uh, Sunny Leone. Oh yeah, uh, she's huge in Bollywood. She's an actress. She does the mainstream. She's there. She's like, she's so famous there, and it's crazy. Surprisingly, she came from the adult, and they've accepted her, you know, and changed her career, and now she's a big superstar there. It's amazing. Yeah, you know. And yeah, I'll, I mean, I I, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh no no go ahead. And I was gonna, I mean as we talk about Sunny Leone, you know she made the transition from you know adult films to, to mainstream. Uh you know Sasha Gray too. Uh she actually Oh yeah and Sasha Gray as well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah mm-hmm. and, and uh, she's been in a in a in a ton of stuff. Uh, I was actually watching a a horror movie and she just appeared. I was like, "Oh, there's Sasha." I was like I didn't even know she was in this. But uh, yeah, it, you know it's it's uh I forget the girl's name. Um It'll come back to me as soon as we're off off, off this call, but uh, off the podcast. <laughs> but I remember, um, oh, Tracy Lords. That's what I was thinking. Of. Oh yes, Tracy Lords. She's yeah, she's one of the the, the original. Yeah, uh, the original. Yes, yeah, cause crossover. I, yeah, because I see her in. A, you know, she's in a ton of movies now. Uh, she's in a lot of horror movies now. But um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's just you know, uh, just I was just giving examples again as we talked about you know sort of making that transition. Uh, and uh, th- those names just popped in my head. But, you know, just back to your career, Charmaine, you know, you mentioned Face of Evil. Um, you know, how, how did you go about getting that role? Was Did your did your manager sort of find you the audition and you went and you auditioned and got the part? No, actually, um, a friend of mine, he's a publicist and he works in the mainstream industry. And he was reading for that, uh, that particular script. And he asked me, um, his friend, that's the director, are, is looking for, you know, f- uh, just a few people to read for, you know, these two roles. And he asked me if I was interested in reading for the roles. And I read two different characters. And um, the director gave me one part. And, uh, you know, I was honored. I was like, okay, great. This is another film, another opportunity. And it was pretty big. I mean, it was a lot of characters. I got to meet because uh, it was it's a good film. It's a very interesting film. I, I I've never done a zombie film. I've never done like anything horror horrific or anything. Um, and especially with you know um, makeup, you know, and just uh, playing a role that I've never played before, like just ugly and zombie and making weird noises. I really had to do the all of that. <laughs> And it was it was it was nice. It was very interesting. I I was I'm glad to have that opportunity. Uh, a friend of mine, you know, gave me that opportunity. So it wasn't very hard. 
I was lucky to, um, you know, get that part. Uh, and it was fun. It was a really, really fun, interesting film to shoot. Um, we shot in like a really broken down house. Every scene was a night scene. So we had to start at like, you know, in the evening to like six in the morning. Um, and during that, I think we shot it, I, I shot it for like a few, three weeks or something. And, um, one week I was, um, uh, in jury duty and it was the same week where I had to wear like zombie makeup. And, uh, it was so difficult cause I told the director one night, I said, I'm, I'm sorry, I have to get off. I had to get off early because I have jury duty at like seven in the morning and he, you know, and you know how directors are. They want you to stay until they finish something. So I ended up staying really late. And I mean, I, I I had to drive home in the sun with like zombie makeup. And I literally looked so scary driving <laughs> home with a scary face. Oh, my God. I look like I, I look like a crackhead, like seriously driving home. You know, you know, zombie makeup. It's just like white face with like just. Oh my God, line, you know, veins everywhere. It was, it was crazy. And then I had to go to jury duty. It was amazing. <laughs> so, so when you walked in for jury duty, did they just say, oh, we're going to pass, Charmaine? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, and it's funny because once they said that, uh, and I thought, you, you know how sometimes when you're in jury duty, you know, okay, you know, there's like 30 people and, you, you know, they only have to pick like 12. And <laughs> hello, they picked me. They picked me. I, was, I got so lucky. I was one of the 12 people. And I had to go back again. It was crazy. But once we um, got to court, they dismissed the case. So I got, you know, even more lucky to not go further. So, you know, that was that was good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah, it was it, it was a very interesting movie. Uh, the the I actually there were a few moments, uh, you know, because I had to be in makeup, and um, we had the makeup artist. He's he was Japanese, and he specialized. And, um, you know, those, you know, the scary, I don't know, those zombie scary makeup. Mm -hmm. And at night it was just, you know, looking at myself in the mirror, I, you know, I would scare myself like, like when I would walk into the restroom and had to pee (laughs) and I would wash my hand and I look up, I'm like, oh my God, I can't look at my face. I can't look at myself. It's just so scary. (laughs) <laughs> it, it, it's funny because I actually was a was a background in a horror movie once, and I was like a, a I was a a corpse in a pile of dead bodies, and I had like this fake blood all over me. So I, yeah. I got it. You know, so after the shoot was over, I thought I had you know I took like this wet wipe type thing, and I wiped my face, and I thought I got it all done. So on the yeah. as we're driving home. I asked my friend, I'm like, listen, let me, let's stop at this little, uh, this little like thrift store, uh, slash bodega, whatever you want to call it. And I, I was mm-hmm. like, I want to grab a drink. And I walk in and the one guy behind the counter just like looks up and staring at me. Well, I was like, what the hell? I, I was like, what do I got something on my face or something? I, ha- <laughs> yeah. I still had blood and stuff all in my hair. I looked like I was in probably a car accident and just sort of walked in. And he, and he oh my god! <laughs> Luckily though, it's Philadelphia. I just kind of blended in eventually, but. Oh my goodness. Right. Oh my god. See, I was in L.A. and I was in a car and they're just like, OK, this is, you know, and it's kind of acceptable. It's like, OK, this is an actor, you know, as an actress, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, it's isn't it funny? Yeah, you just you just, uh, you just forget that you look like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. It, it's it's like so it's sort of like out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, it was a good film. It was really uh, the characters, uh, you know, the the other my fellow actors, they were all mainstream actors. Um Jamie Bernadette, she's a, she was the lead uh, role. She does she she does a lot of horror films. She um, she's from you know she comes from that side of the world of all horror films, and she, you know she's used to it. Um, so she kind of taught me a little bit because um, you know being a zombie, playing a zombie character, you have to I, you know for me my experience is to look glamorous and smile and look. Gore, you know, like have seduction in my eyes and all this stuff. So I had to remove all of that. And director's like, I want you to sneer. And I'm like, what's sneer? He goes, just sneer. This is, it's like a sound and you got to go, you know, like just sneer like a zombie. And I'm like, well, how do you do that? So he's like, come on, you got to be serious. And I'm like, oh my God, I have to. And I had to get into this weird zombie role, you know, that's, and I, and I did. Um, it was nice. It was very, um, I'm glad that I can, you know, I'm able to change, you know, my, 
this character or my, you know, this side of me and go in a different direction. Yeah. It was, it was very nice. Yeah, it's always fun when you ever when you're able to sort of step into a character and try out new things. You know, it's always it's always sort of great to that. That's why uh, as as again we go back to, to sort of typecasting. That's why you know if you're always playing a bad guy, you you sort of mm-hmm. have to. It's a little bit more difficult to try new things because again you're always a bad guy. But when you're able mm-hmm. to sort of step into different characters, it's great to being able to try out this stuff. Like you know, obviously being yeah. able to play a zombie and, and finding out you know or almost beyond pantomiming, you have to sort of come up with all of this almost like a uh, uh, you know, on the spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I had to die, um, you know, even dying, you know, I have to do like the little shake and the ro- oh, eyes rolling back. And, you know, uh, that was very interesting to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was fun. And then blood coming out of my mouth, you know, like sp- spitting it out. And, you know, just it was very fun. I, I loved it. I loved I loved all that, uh, What you know, special effects, the blood and contacts and you know it was it was fun i loved it yeah, yeah, I, I'm glad you you mentioned that too because sometimes again you have to put fake blood in your mouth. And I remember yeah. I was on a set one time oh. and somebody actually said he goes, "I can't take the fake blood," and and the, and, the, and everyone was like, "Trust this, we're you're only gonna have it in there for like five seconds. We're just gonna roll and shoot with it." And uh, he he goes, "All right, fine," and, and he agreed to it. And that blood, he had to do it so many times, and it was like his teeth were all red by the oh. end. And he was like, he goes, "Yeah, that was five seconds, all right," but mm-hmm. uh, but he had a good laugh afterwards. Um, but did, Again, it's stuff like that, you know. That's why I, you know, I always ask about different film experiences because it's always it's always fun to hear stuff like that, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes they say, "Oh, yeah, you know, just leave it in your mouth for a while, and we're gonna do it." And you actually are just sitting there, and you're just like, you want to throw up, like it just tastes nasty, you know. And you're mm-hmm. just like, "Oh, yeah." But it's fun. <laughs> After that, it's like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. So. So, uh, so Charmaine, after you know you, you finished Face of Evil, uh, you know you, you got to you work on Catch Twenty Two, which is how yeah. we met uh, uh, through Josh. Josh, um, yes, yeah. And and I wanted to ask, how, how did you go about getting this role? Did you sort of you know have again have a connection through your network, or is this something that you had to sort of audition for? Yeah, my um, my agent uh, he he gave me a call and he said that there was a, a mainstream. Uh, role for you uh, that you need to read for and I think I was traveling at the time and I think I I think it was during the time that I was quitting the industry I uh, you know I I, I wanted to retire uh, in the adult industry but um, this is he's like this is a mainstream film you know would you be interested and I said of course Uh, so during that time um, I casted for the role he you know it was he he was in New York, so I had to um, read my part, uh, and I had to you know tape it on v- v- you know video and send it to him to see if I you know fit the part. Um, and I I think I read it a few times and, until Josh said, "Okay, you have the part for the role," and I got the role. But during that time, um, after that, after I got the the role, I think it took uh, a while for the film to or the production to start. Um, it took, I think a few years we had to, uh, build the film, uh, you know, like build some funding and, um, you know, I helped uh, also promote the film, uh, funding through my, you know, my social media and, you know, I was dedicated to it. I said, anytime you guys are ready, I'm, you know, I'll be there and ready. Uh, he sent me the, the script, and I read the whole script. It was very interesting. So I, you know, I, I wasn't really prepared uh, until the produ- finally the production was ready. After I think it was after two years or something. And during I, I traveled quite some time during those two years. Um, and I think the finally the the year we shot the film, I was I was in between moving from uh, a different country and. Um, it was it was kind of bizarre because you know I was going back to LA and he said the film is finally ready to shoot in May and and this time I was um, I fell in love I had you know my fiance and I or oh, he was my boyfriend at the time and um, you know I, we were I was in the verge of moving either you know from Los Angeles to France 
And uh, I was going back and forth, flying back and forth from the States to uh, France. And, um, and then in May, finally, you know, we were ready. But I wasn't ready uh, because, you know, this role, this character, she is a troubled girl, um, you know, dr- you know, it had a lot of drugs involved. Um, and what else? Uh, yeah, she's just like just torn up. I mean, beat up and also she dies. So, you know, I thought it was going to be like, um, you know, a little quick little scene, but you know, they needed me, uh, for about, I think like a week and a half. So, Every day, you know, like I, I kind of got nervous. I said, okay, is there anything that, you know, what, what do I need to do? How do I need to prepare? So Josh, you know, he asked me, okay, do a little research, watch some films, you know, about heroin and, and drugs and, you know, and I, and some, you know, like just uh, thriller movies. And, and then I started thinking like, oh my God, this is going to be, you know, I have to play a, a totally different character, like another like scary weird, you know, thriller film. And I have to, I don't know. I, I, I just didn't know what I was going to get myself into. So I kind of got a little nervous, but, um, but he, you know, he assured me that, uh, you know, it's okay. You know, don't worry. It's not really, you know, it's not going to be too crazy. So when we shot the film in New York, um, I met the rest of the characters. Everybody was amazing. Josh, you know, everybody was they made me feel comfortable because I, there was, you know, like, you know, there were some parts where I had to get beat up by all of them. Like there was, you know, cause the, the movie, um, there were just different parts of, they didn't know how I died. So, you know, there were different scenes of me having to be, you know, brutally abused or killed. And so, you know, I, I, it, it just didn't make me feel I'm a very positive person. So I just didn't want to, I don't know. I've, I wanted to feel a little comfortable with that. So I, I, you know, I asked Josh like, or, or, and the director, uh, I mean, and the writer, um, Shawnee, you know, is there something like you, can you guys have like, I don't know, donuts around? Cause I, you know, like that makes me feel, uh, you know, it makes me feel like kind of happy and good. You know, is it possible you can have some donuts around? Because, you know, like that feeling of just like this girl, you know, I don't know. She just, it just didn't, it didn't make me feel happy. Mm-hmm. So they had donuts for me ready until, you know, after I got beat up, I had like, you know, here's your donuts. So <laughs> <laughs> I had a nice donut and I was back to, you know, being happy again. What kind of and, donut was uh, it? Uh, well, they, he had, uh, they got me a Dunkin' Donuts, so I had, like, a variety of, like, glazed uh, chocolate and sprinkles, so I had a variety, like, a, what is it, um, what is it, the bear claw, I had all of that, it was really good. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was, um, it was interesting, it was very interesting, this role, uh, you know, like, shooting a, you know, I've never, I mean, having a syringe I mean it was a fake syringe but he's like okay you got to do it this way this is you know they have a they had like a little bag and you know it's like a it's a process you know and I you know there was things that I had to do you know um and I didn't know how to you know it's crazy I had to do all of these little things for you know the scene and I said okay you know you got to do this and you got to do that so it was very interesting to do um and then I had to die, you know, I, I, and I had to have makeup again, like, uh, like I was dead. I had to have bruises on my face. Um, I was, you know, they painted my face kind of white, you know, cause I was, I was pretty much dead in the tub. Um, and it was funny because, um, you know, there was, there were, there were a few instances where I had to, you know, use the restroom and I would scare myself again. Like I would go in the bathroom at night because, you know, and then the bathroom was downstairs and I would forget that I had makeup on my face and I would just scare myself again, <laughs> you know, looking in the mirror like, oh, my God, I'm back at it again. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. It, it, it's it's uh, it's at least you didn't have to go outside or go to jury duty for that one. Oh, yes. yeah, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, and no, and it's funny because I had to be in makeup like that all day, 
um, not only just evening, I mean, even during the day. So like at lunch too, like we'll all have lunch together and I have my robe on and I have my death makeup <laughs> and I'm just like, Hey guys, you know, <laughs> and outside and we would eat outside and there's just people walking around, like looking at like, who's this girl? Oh my God. But it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> just another day in New York city, right? <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> So, but it was really much fun. I, I had a great time. Yeah, I, you know, as I was speaking to Josh, uh, you know, about how this whole movie sort of came together. You know, you mentioned, it, it, you know, about two years. Uh, you know, they, they, he was actually talking about that in his interview about how it came together, you know, finding the money, making sure the script is set, uh, you know, because yeah. that's, that's always the big thing for, for films, especially indie film, is finding that money to be able to make it, to, to pay yeah. for, you know, not, not only to pay everyone, you know, not to pay your cast, but also pay your crew, locations, insurance. And, yeah. uh, you, and, it, and it's just sort of, it can it can you know sp- uh, go on for that for you know a while even years because uh, it's just that's one of the tricky things now about about oh, it's always been about indie film is is being able to find enough money to make it and you know sort of without making any sort of artistic compromises. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So it's you know I'm glad you you were you were uh, you know you were able to to be in it. I'm glad that you were able to make it. And I wanted to ask you know have have you seen a final cut of the film yet? Oh yes. Yes, yes, I have. Um, we there, there were there was a film festival in Miami last year. I attended that. Um, it was our first film festival, uh, so I, you know, I it was you know I live here in France now, so it wasn't it wasn't a, a long flight. It was about a six hour, seven hour flight to Miami. So, um, you know, I was able to attend, and it was it was not it was amazing to see it. Um, you know, on the screen. It was really cool. I, I loved it. It was, they've done it, you know, he did a really great job on the edits and, um, he also got a lot of amazing, you know, good parts, you know, like the, my good sides, you know, my back and my hair, everything he did, he did really good. So I'm, I'm very happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, hopefully the, the audience responded to it. Not like, uh, what, they, what happened within France with black dynamite. So hopefully, hopefully the, the audience said, uh, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hope so. I, I think a lot of people can re- probably relate to this film. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's a horror or it's a thriller film. Um, you know, uh, comedy, it's, yeah, it's just particular because, you know, every country, they have different humors, but this is a thriller. And I think a lot of, uh, you know, everybody around the world can re- kind of relate to, you know, in, in some parts of this film. Yeah. And, and I, as we, you know, sort of talk about how everyone had Netflix and, you know, indie film, you know, those universal themes are more important now than ever. And, and universal themes yes. are, you know, feelings of, of regret, revenge, uh, all those things that, that no matter where you come from, everybody can identify with in one way or another. Or, or you know, whether they've happened to them or they know someone that this has happened to, you know, bro, uh, love, love, peace, and, war, revenge, all mm-hmm. those, all those sort of universal themes. Yes. Yes. Exactly. So, you know, Charmaine, I, you know, I, again, I was talking to Josh about just the release of this film. You know, what do you have any sort of future projects that you're working on right now? Anything, anything that maybe you're in, in pre-production for uh, maybe anything that you're writing yourself? Uh, just is there anything that you're working on? Well, right now, um, you know, I'm working on uh, being, you know, settling down here in France. Uh, my fiance and I are, you know, planning to marry soon. Uh, so, you know, like we, I have to do all the, you know, all that stuff preparing for a family. Uh, but in the business side, um, you know, I'm not allowed to work here. So I'm only doing a lot of conventions, um, in, in the States. Uh, I have a convention that's coming up in June in Chicago and, um, there's another one in New Jersey, uh, and later in November, but, that's pretty much basically what uh, my schedule is this year is just uh, focusing on uh, my marriage, you know, and settling down here in France. That's kind of my first priority because <laughs> well, well, yeah. I, yeah, it's, it, it's, you know, live, moving from a different country, it takes some time, you know, and 
you know, if if there is another festival, uh, which actually there is, I'm sorry, um, for uh, The Face of Evil, uh, there's, uh, I think it's the New York Film International Film Festival. It's in April. So the, uh, the film will be premiering there in April, but I, I'm not going to be attending. Okay, and, and I'll yeah. make sure to, to link that in the show notes about, about that premiere, though. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's in New York. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it, this is, you know, the, this is a very critical time for me of just putting, um, family first, you know, uh, for the first time. Cause I've, you know, all through my, out my career, you know, it's always just been me, 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 and you know, my career and my fiance is very supportive Any any festival or anything, um, you know, well, I'm, I'm, you know, he supports it, even any film, but I think for now, for this year, I think that's, kind of what um, my priorities are, uh, you know. So after, I think, uh, settling down and getting, you know, being married, um, I will, you know, like, try to pursue my acting career maybe here in Europe and find an agency, you know, in the in London area because they speak English. And hopefully I can uh, finally speak, you know, be fluent in French where I can um, start working here in France. Mm Mm-hmm. So yeah. I, yeah, that's basically what my kind of goals are right now. Yeah, I was just going to say because you know, uh, you know, you're in France, and you know, the United Kingdom is, isn't too far away, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, obviously, a lot of English, uh, you know, language films do come into Europe because uh, usually Europeans, as I, I've been to Europe several times, and I've noticed they they mm-hmm. usually speak like their own language, uh, you know, like Italian, but they also speak English or they speak French, yes. and they also speak English. Um, yes, you know, I, I know foreign language uh, sort of starts there very early. Um, so what? Yeah. So and I've also have a, a ton of friends from Australia and New Zealand who are, who are actually moving to Britain who are in the film industry and they're in the like marketing promotion side because it's just it's much bigger than uh, in, in Britain than it is in Australia and New Zealand. You know, it's funny. Um, I've noticed there's a lot of British actors that are moving into the the Hollywood. I mean, I, I mean, even on Netflix or even just film, I, a lot of actors like even, you know, like Game of Thrones and Star Wars, they're all like British actors. It's crazy. So I know that there are some, you know, even films, they, they shoot a lot of uh, films in, in, in the London area and, the, in, you know, that side. So, you know, they're they're. You know, there could be some opportunity for me there uh, since it's much closer. So um, that's pretty, you know, I'm, I'm going to I'm looking into that this side, you know, this side of the uh, the world. Yeah, it's uh, there are a lot of British actors now in Hollywood. Uh, Isn't they, it I, funny? I, Have I, you I, noticed I, if you really think about it, they're all British. They just speak. They have just an English accent. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Idris Alba really started all that because uh, he was on The Wire, uh, and now he's doing now he's he he has the best of both worlds because now he yeah. he's here and in and in England. Um, I love yeah he has a show on uh, Netflix. Luther. Um, yes, Luther. I love I love Luther. He he's so good in that show. It's really 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 good. Yeah. yeah, isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah, because the first time I ever saw him was in The Wire, and he has that Baltimore mm-hmm. accent. And then when I I, I saw him, uh, I forget what movie it was with that British accent. It may have been Rock and Roller, uh, but he was mm-hmm. he was. I was like, wow. I, I was like, hey, he's you know he's he's able to sort of do that do both. And then then I was like, oh, somebody goes, you know, he's actually British. He's actually not American. I'm like, oh, well, I didn't even know uh, mm-hmm. because that he had that Baltimore accent down. Absolutely phenomenal. I mean, it, I, I mean, I I have no friends from Baltimore, and it, he he sounded like he could fit right in. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Like, it's crazy to hear a British person just completely change into an American accent, or like even or Boston accent, or you know, there's just different accent. It's so weird because for me, I, can, I I don't know if I can do that, you know, because mm-hmm. my you know if I I speak a little French you know, to my, my, uh, my in-laws. Uh, but I have a, an American accent, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you can, when I say something in French, it's, it's, an, it's like, you can tell I'm American, mm-hmm. you know, but like other people, you know, like when they're fluent, you, you cannot tell, you know, yeah. but you can tell I'm American. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, Charmaine, you know, we've been talking for about, uh, I think, 30, 45 minutes. I, I, I lost, I lost my timer. It's, it's not on the screen right now, but I wanted to ask, you know, is there anything maybe just in closing that you wanted to discuss or maybe any f- sort of final thoughts to put an end, at, put a period at the end of this whole conversation? Well, yeah, I just want to say that, um, 
you know, I, I, I still want to pursue, you know, uh, doing film and, and, you know, my, I, my career is still not over, you know, like this is just, you know, my, my personal life, uh, it's like, it's, I'm grateful for everything and I still want to pursue, you know, my, my dreams as an actress. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I've finally retired into, in the adult industry. Uh, you know, this year I was honored, uh, an induction of the hall of fame, uh, which was, it, it, you know, that's nice of them to, to do, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like, Oh, okay. I'm in the hall of fame. So that was nice. And, um, yeah. And thank you, you know, thank you for, you know, this, this nice uh, interview. Um, and I hope catch 22, uh, can be uh, successful and, you know, you know, catch uh, everybody's eye on this film. It's a really great film. Every, every, all the guys in the film, they're really great actors. Even though I had a short film, it was just a great opportunity to just be in, you know, that world of film. So, Oh yeah, it's it's been a pleasure okay. having you here, and yeah, uh, you know, you. I, and, and I'm definitely gonna you know link to everything that we talked about in the show notes uh, again uh, for everyone listening. Thank you. Um, so, Charmaine, where can people find you out online? Well, you can find me um, on my social media. It's very easy. It's just at Charmaine Star um, on my Twitter and my Instagram, and then I have a Facebook fan page, Charmaine Star. And if you also want to read, uh, you know, a lot of just um, Hearsay, what says my blog, CharmaineStar.com. And that's it. Cool. And I will link to all that in the show notes, everybody. It's at DaveBullis.com. Just go there. You'll find this episode uh, and all the show links. And at, at Twitter, it's at Dave underscore Bullis. Charmaine Star, I want to say thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, Dave, for having me. Find Dave at DaveBullis.com. Please make sure to subscribe and share the podcast.